Lord, we just got to praise you and worship you in song, considering what you've done. And when we get to heaven, how we get to worship you there and extol you in your majesty and in your glory. I pray as we continue uh, our worship service, as we consider your table, Jesus, as we consider your cross, that you would just receive more worship and more praise and more glory. And it is always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please be seated and open your Bibles to Psalm 14. Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3 is where we're going to be today. But if you don't have a Bible in your hands, we want to make sure that everybody has a copy of God's Word. So the men are going to come by and just go ahead and raise your hand if you don't have a copy of God's Word, and they will distribute that to you. Again, Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3. So this is the time in our service that we take the Lord's Supper. We take a little piece of bread and a little cup of juice. That little piece of bread represents the body of Jesus, and that little cup of juice represents the blood of Jesus. And we do this to remember what he accomplished on the cross. We do this to proclaim his death. We do this to celebrate the good news. But the only reason there's good news is because of the reality of the bad news. Please follow along as I read through Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord Yahweh has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together, they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. The fool here in verse 1 is not someone that simply just lacks understanding. This fool is morally depraved. This fool is wicked. And this fool is in willful rebellion against God. Verse 1 says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Notice that it says in his heart. The fool is not willing to verbally declare his rebellion against God and his rule over the world. But the fool will act in accordance with his beliefs. He will act as though there is no God. In the middle of verse 1, it says, They are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. Here God's word is describing the collective of all those that are fools. They are morally corrupt. They commit vile and shameful deeds. And their deeds, their doings are an abomination to God. And at the end of verse 1, we have the declaration that there is no one who does good. None of these wicked fools does good. And good here is referring to moral goodness, that which is pleasing to God, which is in submission to God and in obedience to God. And this declaration is completely appropriate, especially when contrasted with the, the moral depravity and corruption described earlier in this verse. And just so that we don't think of wicked fools as some special category of people that don't do good. God, in verses 2 and 3, is going to indict all of mankind with the same declaration. Verse 2, Yahweh, the Lord, has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. Here, the omniscient God has performed a search of all humanity to see if there are any who aren't wicked fools. If there are any who don't act as if there is no God. 
And the results of this search are found in verse 3. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. All of mankind has turned away from God. And all of mankind has become morally corrupt and depraved. And all of this is offensive to a perfectly holy God. At the end of verse 3, it says, There is no one who does good, not even one. Here we have the universal declaration about the natural state of humanity. There is not a single person who does good as God defines. There is not a single person who truly seeks God to know God, to please God, to obey God. God knows all the deeds, all of the words, all of the thoughts, and all of the motivations of every single person. And they all miss the mark. There is nothing that natural man can do in and of themselves to please God and to be right before him. Mankind is sinful. And a just and holy response to sin is God's wrath. Every single person rightly deserves to suffer under the wrath of God forever. And they deserve to suffer because of their own sinful rebellion against God. And that is bad news for humanity. But there is good news. God saves sinners. God the Father sent his son, Jesus Christ, to suffer in the place of sinners. Jesus bore the wrath of God on the cross so that sinners are forgiven. All those that repent and believe will be saved. So the question is, have you repented? Have you had a change of mind and turned from pursuing your sin to pursuing Christ? Have you taken God at his word and trusted and believed in him? If you would, by your own admission, answer no to those questions, then we simply ask you to pass the tray by when it comes. This is a, a family time for those that are believers, for those that are pursuing Christ. It's a time for believers to celebrate and remember what he accomplished on the cross. I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're glad that you get to hear the bad news and that we pray and I pray and hope that you will respond to the good news. Please talk to me or the person that brought you. We'd love to talk with you about repentance and faith in Christ. Believer, do you embrace the truth of your own depravity? Do you embrace the truth that you deserve to suffer for your sins, for your rebellion, and you deserve to suffer forever? Believer, you were in a hopeless state, but God saved you. He provided mercy and grace. He poured out his wrath on Christ at the cross instead of pouring out his wrath on you. And the result is that you get to live for him now and get to look forward to being with him forever, worshiping him similar to what we just sang about. When your hearts are prepared, please go ahead and take communion on your own. Men, please serve us.